very much. Appreciate everyone uh, coming out. Um, I'm going to try to have to use the PowerPoint either, but unfortunately with visual technology, I have to show you things at this point. Um, I'd like to title this presentation called How Much Do I Need to Know? Um, we've all, you know, sort of painted a picture for you. We've all sat in front of our computer, sat in front of Amazon, some sort of place, thinking, hey, I want to buy a particular product, and I'm looking around. One of the things that, the, of course, the e-commerce provider and the product seller want to know is exactly, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to put that in the shopping cart, or are you going to actually just put that on a wish list, or are you going to close the blouse, or get off to sleep at night? Uh, what you want to know, though, is what would actually make me buy this product now? Um, so sometimes the question is, would you buy this product now if you knew what a social network had actually been saying about it, where you could see people who have been using that product? Um, if you saw live reviews right there uh, while you were looking at that product, might that change your mind? If you knew a little bit about where the product was made, how it was manufactured, um, its energy, efficiency, anything like that, can can sway sort of uh, your decision process uh, when you actually buy a product. And we like to call that sort of getting into the tipping point of, yes, I'm going to make that purchase. And that's essentially what Smart Symbols is all about. Uh, we use a visual strategy to essentially aggregate lots of information on the web about a particular product, we put it in places that where a particular transaction might take place, uh, and that we bring everything to you when you're there. So now, buying when you're using smart symbols actually looks like something like this. Let's say you're looking at buying a book. Instead of just seeing that book with maybe a little bit of the author review, maybe a couple of small ratings, you can actually mouse over these little symbols there, and they will all expand right on that page having searched the web and brought back very particular information uh, in relation to that particular book. Again, the idea is there's might be just enough information to say, yes, I'm going to make that purchase now that I understand the product, understand the company, understand more about it. Uh, also works for the famous Craftsman Hammer Drill. What the heck is this? I've never actually seen one of these before. And so you can get, garner enough information so it's very effective for products that are being newly introduced don't have an understanding about how to research uh, and look at that. So how does this all work? Well, essentially, we have a, an aggregation engine. What that aggregation engine can do is can take any product uh, or service or offering. It will go out and it will scour the web and find out every bit of information about that. And then can organize that into uh, rec what we call recognizable symbols. So uh, this one might be um, you know, rating. This one might be about news, this one might be about social networks. And so people can say, oh, the social network stuff, as opposed to maybe individually clicking on the Twitter icon or a Facebook icon or a MySpace icon. People just would recognize that and pull that forward. Um, we essentially then make that so that customers can interact with that information, see it, and then we have an analytics package which goes through and now starts bringing back information to either the e-commerce people or the actual provider. So as an example, it might be useful to know that for a particular book, a particular author, 82% of the people are really interested in what the social network has to say about that. We couldn't care less what the New York Times has to say about that. It allows them to sort of change their marketing strategies as they're working through that. So it's a whole, it's like a whole new level of information that people just don't have uh, accessible today to them. How's it distributed? It's essentially distributed exactly like a YouTube video. It's a small piece of code, you just grab it, drop it into a web environment, so it could be a website, you put these on their blogs, you go into an e-commerce environment, really, really simple to do, and very easy to manage. Once you put the, the smart symbols into a particular product, let's say a large publisher might have, you know, Barnes & Noble and, you know, uh, Borders and Amazon and hundreds of places where that product is sold, you manage that one set of icons once, and it gets distributed anywhere, change it once, change it all over the place as well, so quite efficient. Um, the analytics are pretty extensive, so in other words, we can tell what people clicked on, what people clicked on while they were inside of that kind of thing, where they came from, all those sort of things. And again, it's just bringing, um, imagine a situation where I'm Canon, I'm selling a camera, I can't tell the 25 web pages you might have gone to outside of that browser to try and research that product, but I can tell you now quite a lot of information. Oh, they're really interested in the product features, and while they were in here, they're looking at this, 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 and this. So it's a much different level of information than you might otherwise get. Uh, so why is it important, just really in summary? First of all, it's a lot about space. If you look at those icons, it's really, really simple. You can't take 25 pages of information and stick it in a screen width 
uh, and make any sense out of it. Uh, it's also about dynamics. Most of this information is changing really, really uh, constantly. A lot of this information that the companies don't even produce themselves anymore, you know, so having control over that is an important aspect. Uh, and next thing is distribution. As we mentioned, a lot of, a lot of manufacturers or product providers or service providers you know, just sell from more than one place, so they can't just be producing all their own material uh, just that one time around. Uh, and it's not just for e-commerce as well. Uh, we just did some recent things for uh, the New York City Big Apps competition. Uh, as an example there, Smart Cities for the New York Public Library, the mouse over, maybe the, the library page, but you also get very quickly other information brought to you. The uh, Department of Transportation has a bunch of information on their website, but we can also tell about parking traffic, what the social network is saying about the Department of Transportation, uh, which sometimes is rather entertaining to look at any given time. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Check us out, Spartan. I was wondering if there's particular products or areas that you focus on, because I know that when I go to Amazon, I already know, I've researched her, I know exactly what I'm looking for, such as a book or some type of electronics device, and I've, I've most likely at that point have done the research, so I'm wondering if there's certain products or software or areas that you're focusing on for this, um, this is software that you have. You know, there's two things I say right now. One I would say is that um, you're getting more common, but you're actually not the most common person. A lot of times they're still coming across something. As an example, you know, Amazon's famous for you look at one thing and they suggest five other things you might like. As soon as you go and look at the five other things, you don't have the research anymore because you might have researched another product. So they're really trying to cap capture that sort of person, the secondary person who doesn't have enough information yet. Um, at the moment, just because of the size of the company, we're really focused on the publishing industry because they're in a really huge state of flux. They're trying to figure out what to do with all this content, how to market their products. Um, we also do the consumer sort of electronic spaces there, so that Craftsman example uh, is, a, is an example. Um, and we are working a little bit on just the location type of thing. So that New York City example, you know, here's a municipality that has literally, they have like 27 websites just for the New York City government so much information which is almost completely disorganized. So it's like a location, consumer, or publishing uh, currently. Want to find out the question? So at a real high level, how do you make money? What's your business model with clients? You know, essentially our business model is we would, we would go to a publisher and, and, and say, a good sized publisher might be two, three hundred billion dollar publisher, 600 books. We essentially sell them the whole platform for distribution and say, you know, it costs this much a year to have this particular platform. It's roughly based on about how many distribution points. So one simple set might be for, say, James Patterson book, might be distributed, you know, 50 or 60 different uh, e-commerce environments type of thing. So that's kind of how it's, uh, how it's structured there. <coughs> Very common in how, like, ad network stuff is distributed as <coughs> well, price on volume, price on activity. And, of course, we have base prices to just put it all together for them, so. Thank you very much.